Ladies and gentlemen, I turned this into this. And then they finally turned into these. Wow, so cute. But what are we looking at? Let's use a close-up shot. This insect is named the Mulberry Silk Moth. And this unusual species is one of the only few species of insect that were ever fully domesticated by humans. And today I will show you how to raise them. Let me show you what I have stored for you in my refrigerator. That's right people, a little surprise for all of you. The eggs of this species hibernate, that's why I've stored them cold since last winter. But on room temperature, if warmed up after being stored cold for a couple of months, the tiny babies will hatch from them. These are the tiny little babies that have just hatched. They're going to be our future little mulberry silk moths. Now let's get them some food ASAP. Guess what I'm unboxing here? This is artificial caterpillar food. It's made from dried leaf powder and soy proteins and all you have to do is add hot water and then you will have instant food for your caterpillars, even in winter. Isn't that great? Of course you can also use real leaves of the mulberry plant. And then I added some hot water, using my tea kettle. Why does the water have to be hot? Because this sterilizes the food and kills unwanted bacteria or fungal spores that may grow in the substrate. And then finally stir and you have produced artificial diet that is suitable for the caterpillars to eat. Then I scoop the babies up and put them inside a tiny plastic container that had slight air holes in it. The holes slightly ventilate the container. I pick up the babies carefully with a paintbrush or a stick. After that it's best to leave them alone so they can get adjusted and finally manage to find the food that I've prepared for them. There you go. These are tiny babies feeding from the artificial diet. What do you think people? It seems to be working rather neatly, isn't it? The first instars of this species only last for a couple of days. And before you know it, they've grown bigger. They seem to be doing quite well, don't you agree? I was um, starting to get the feeling that, however, I should soon move them to a bigger container. I think that, um, by the way, they were around instar number two or maybe instar number three. But many caterpillars inside a small container does not spark joy and it's a nice invitation for diseases and infections. So I really wanted to upgrade them. And here I am, transferring the tiny babies to a much bigger box to raise them in. The most important about raising caterpillars is upgrading them to bigger enclosures as the larvae grow larger. The bigger they grow, the more space that they do need. After a while, the caterpillars really had, had a growth spurt. In Instar 3 and later 4, they attain bigger size exponentially. And while I was pleased to see the results, it did mean that yes, eventually I was going to have to think about giving them more space to live in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time once again to upgrade the container. That doesn't rhyme and I'm a terrible singer and I have a hole in my sock. Anyway, this is their new home. I have decided this uh, stuff is a bit thinner than I usually make it. But I guess that's because I'm keeping them really dry now. It's winter. Because of the cold air. 
humidity is very low, the air is dry. So by making their food extra mushy, they're going to have enough moisture to drink. This food will also dry out pretty fast. So while it looks like diarrhea right now, I know that doesn't sound tasty, but while it looks like that right now, it's gonna dry up and be more like a cake pretty soon. As you can see, the uh, caterpillars are doing pretty well. They are waiting for their new home. Now, I'm gonna use my fingers for this. Don't worry, I will disinfect the container after, so the bacteria from my hands will not remain on them. Now, this I'm going to skip, because I have to do this with a few hundred larvas. That's not really epic content to see me uh, fish them out like that, but yeah, let's skip ahead. Does my method even work? Well, the results speak for themselves. Of course, Bombix Mori is an absolute beginner species, but it's still nice to be successful the first time I ever try. So I did notice variation in size, but that's also because they vary in age, as some eggs hatched weeks later than the earliest ones. Wow, they're getting quite big now. Not fully there yet, but these larvae can reach respectable sizes, despite turning into relatively small moths. I do wonder if they lose that much weight in silk when they spin cocoons. Interesting! There are many variations available, but mine were mostly plain white. Yep, that's almost fully grown. Anytime now. This species is one of the cutest I've raised by the way. Something about the larva is just adorable to me personally. Well believe it or not, but this caterpillar is spinning a cocoon. Do you see the web? That's actually silk. It's constructing a cocoon. Finally, our first cocoon ever! One day later it looks like this. Amazing, no? The quality of the silk is incredible. Commercial grade silk. It's important to not immediately harvest the cocoons, but give the caterpillars a few extra days to pupate before ripping it off the surface. Shortly after the first one, more caterpillars started spinning cocoons as well. From that day and beyond, I was practically harvesting cocoons each day, and the amount I had was rapidly growing. It seems that with this cocoon production, my attempts at raising the original silk moth Bombix Mori have done quite well. From my understanding, these cocoons should be pretty easy to hatch at room temperature in an open container, so I will just keep them in there. Look at the silk. The silk of this species has amazing quality. And it should, since this is a commercial species of silk moth that people farm professionally. It's really soft and smooth. The cocoons can be kept around 21 degrees Celsius at room temperature, but warmer is acceptable too. Although this is a robust species that will survive almost anywhere indoors, in just a few weeks, expect to see the first moths.
wow, the moths are coming out. Here they finally are. Mulberry silk moths or Bombyx mori. Sadly, these moths have no functioning mouth parts and are not able to feed. This means their lifespan is limited. Essentially, they starve to death in a short time. Most of them live for a week or maybe even a small amount of time longer. Pairing these moths is quite easy. It's as simple as putting a male and female together in a container. and They will automatically find each other and effortlessly start pairing. This moth is one of the few only domesticated species of insects on the planet. And as a result, they have lost much of their original coloration and are pale white. Not just that, they have become completely unable to fly as their wings and the muscles that control them are reduced. And the wings have lost their rigidity to support them and are indeed soft and almost look deflated. This species originally comes from China and their main food is mulberry plant. The moths kept coming out, as we have farmed many. Are they not cute? Let me show you some more close-ups right now. And then the moths sadly begin to die. But they do leave behind some presents for me in the form of eggs. Which means that the next generation is already on the way. And with that, the breeding project has been completed. Thank you for watching this channel. Did you like this video? Then please find my big and main YouTube channel titled Part Coppens. The channel you are watching right now is my secret secondary channel, in which I only post bloopers, outtakes, short summaries of long videos and more. For the main content I make, please find my YouTube channel named Bart Coppens by searching for Bart Coppens in the YouTube search bar. My main channel is where I actually upload my best content and not here. Please subscribe to me there and find my content there instead of on this channel. Bye bye.